For Seattle voters, there were two ballot measures that were considered on the August primary election ballot. I'm Enrique Cerna, along with Joni Balter, KCTS 9 political analyst, here to give you some details to break down those ballot measures, and they involved what? Affordable housing on one of them, and the other one was sort of a wild rendition of what should happen next to the Seattle waterfront. And it was very wild. And obviously people didn't agree with it completely. Uh, but the big ticket item that uh, received huge voter approval had to deal with housing in Seattle. Seattle Proposition 1 received nearly 68 percent voter approval. It needed a simple majority for approval. And again, I think it showed that people here in Seattle are willing to pay money for issues like housing and social concerns. Are they ever? This is the yeah. land of perpetual yeses. Uh, and, and think about it. Uh, what stories have been on the front page for the last many months? Homelessness, housing prices, housing affordability. So the voters, they, they want to do something. This is something they can do to help. Yeah, and they did. Uh, let's talk about how you qualify for this housing. Uh, people must earn 60% or less of the area's median income. According to city projections, that amounts to nearly $38,000 for one person, a little more than $43,000 for a couple, and just over $54,000 for a family of four. Now, much of this levy is really aimed at the people that are very low income, uh, and those are earning less than 30% of the uh, median income. So in the long run, what's really the value of this? So let me read you a quote from our mayor, Ed Murray because I think he put it pretty well. I really do think this is a city defining what you do with economic inequality, said Ed Murray. And he was, even he was surprised. He said, I'm a little amazed at these results because he as mayor has had five uh, extra levies approved, people wanting to spend money to improve our city. And, it, and Seattle has had a housing levy on the ballot since 1981. It's one of our values. It's something we believe in doing something about. Yeah, well, the, the the percentages and the voter approval really show that. And they were even going up from election night. Right. Yeah. And, and while voters gave a, a big thumbs up to the housing levy, they said uh, no way to this other measure, which was Seattle Initiative 123, and it would build a park on the top of the Alaskan Way viaduct. Kind of a goofy idea, and there really wasn't any money to, if this had passed anyway. 80% of voters said no way. That's about as resounding as you can get. And think about the August voters. So we sometimes call them perfect voters because if you're voting in August, you know, you're four for four is what the uh, political experts call it, or three for four. So three out of four elections, four out of four. So these are high info voters. And they knew that this idea flew in the face of already uh, planning underway for the waterfront. It's been going on for years. It has a, a, a high level designer of it and it has a lot of public input. And this other idea sort of just came in off of a napkin and didn't, <laughs> didn't really have a ton of uh, interest, enthusiasm, or buy in. Right. None of it. And the voters showed that they and didn't care for it. And voters are over it. Yes, they uh, are. We're not finished yet with ballot measures, at least in November. Coming up is a big transportation package that voters will be looking at. Uh, so voters in King, Pierce, and Snohomish County will weigh in on a $54 billion transportation measure that brings light rail to the area. Among other things, it's called uh, Sound Transit 3. Is this a good idea, bad idea? Well, I don't exactly want to go there. I just want to pick up on the word that you said, big. This thing is big. It's actually a monster. It's enormous. And so, yes, Seattle is finally falling in love with light rail. You can go to the new stations, Capitol Hill and near the university, and people are using light rail. The problem with this measure is it's so enormous that it represents a very long commitment to light rail. And unlike the housing levy, which didn't really have much organized, didn't have any organized opposition, this will have opposition. We should have a big debate about that much money. It's huge. We will have a big debate about that much money. This one is going to, uh, I think, catch a lot of attention from people on both sides of the aisle. Now, voters will also decide Initiative 732. It is a carbon tax proposal. It's a little complicated, but we've come up with a way to explain it with the help of some chickens. This is Sally. Sally's hiding something, a carbon footprint. But someday soon, Sally's carbon footprint could tip the scales. 
Now, this explainer is available online at kcts9.org. Go there, check it out. It's very well done and explains this carbon tax proposal very well. And we'll have more election coverage here at kcts9.org. I'm Enrique Cerna along with Joni Balter. We'll talk more next time.